Hey Carb Geeks, interesting one. Question, what works better for you? A bait boat with a winch cam, or you know, like maybe you like me, something a little cheaper, okay? So what I got here is a um, fish spy camera. It's basically a marker float with a camera in it. And what I like to do personally is I like to use this in place of a winch cam on a bait boat for reasons we'll talk about as we go through. So I'm going to roll the footage. Okay. <laughs> We're going to start with, um, well, the first part you'll see is this thing. And it's set up just like a marker float, but I've got a little bit of a, you know, probably a six inch leader on there. So when it's actually on the bottom, it sits off the bottom six inches when it's wound all the way down. That allows me to see what's right under the float in detail. Okay. So it's the same as a marker float set up apart from I have this small kind of trace here. Okay. Now, <clears throat> The video will see I've basically loaded this into the uh, bait boat <clears throat> and I'm just going to send it out to the spot and drop some bait. So let's watch that footage. Okay. So here we go. <laughs> that's me behind, right? Okay. So that's me. Uh, it's the summer of uh, last year. So summer of, uh, actually, so I think it's summer of 18, summer of 2018. Now I am trying to. <laughs> get the thing working it's actually an rt4 bait boat which is kind of nice okay and i've got like uh, if you can see there you're kind of looking you know out from if i can show you out from here right so you can see the market led <clears throat> a little bit of the trace on screen there and a bit of the line and off we go i sped it up a bit there just to get to the spot okay Let's see what happens <laughs> it'll slow down uh, right when we're about to drop so, oh, see that? It tightened up a bit there. I'm actually trying to let line out from the rod, of course. And uh, looks like we're arriving. Let's see what happens. Yep, there we go. Now, what I've done here is I've actually reeled in right when the door opened on the hopper. And I've actually, oh, if you saw that, I just overtook the, uh, the bait on the way down. And now it's falling past the camera. Okay, so again, it's six inches off bottom. And now the... The pellets and its maze actually pellets and maze are falling literally over the top of the spot and the camera is actually above the spot now what's cool about this obviously you can see exactly what's going on it's right where it should be and also there's no twist one of the things i really dislike about my um <laughs> camera is that it in my uh, camera my winch cam is that it twists a lot right as we saw from the footage there it does not twist at all okay so now we're reeling in. Now another great thing about this is you can not only check your bait, you can actually reel in as a traditional marker float and, you know, review the footage later, of course, but you can check the bottom on the way out. You can reel it up to check depths, etc. So you can treat it like a marker float, but you're videoing what the marker float does, which I think is a really neat application. Okay. Now, if you can see in the top left-hand corner there, I did actually throw over uh, one of those uh, deeper fish finders and where I'm fishing is actually on the left of the screen there on the marginal slope, right before the, the big bank of weed. Okay, so it detected the bank of weed, and I'm actually going to pull through the weed in a moment, but I'm checking kind of spots all the way up to the base of the weed. Okay, so I'm making both a digital map with the chirp sonar, a photography kind of, oh, I'm such a nerd, right? A photographic kind of record with this thing, okay? And then, you know, the traditional feel with the lead and, you know, the depth with the marker flow. So it's kind of a three approaches to solving a problem. And I'm, you know, I'm really kind of obsessed with what the bottom's like, where my bait's going to be, what my bait looks like on the bottom. You know, all those nerdy things are all totally interested in. Okay. And so, you know, when I have a campaign spot and, you know, summer of uh, 21, which is coming up, I'll uh, visit the spot again and see if it's changed in any way. You know, and you know, triple, triple kind of survey it again. But from the start of the start of the campaign, so in spring when it's less weed, I'll throw it out and take a look. So stay tuned for that one. As we can see, coming back through, <laughs> catching some weed there. Obviously, some about halfway across. I think that the I think it's uh, how many wraps with that? It wasn't far. I think it was about eight wraps to the spot. So I'm, I'm fishing actually on the downslope of a marginal, marginal downslope of an island. Right, where it's nice and clean and gravel. And in the center of the kind of the, the pond there, it's weedy as heck. And then it kind of shallows up, you know, on the right side on the picture there on the sonar, it sh uh, 
you know, it shows up dramatically, and that's where I'm, you know, I'm fishing from there. Okay. So I'll be quiet and let you watch. <laughs> yeah, we're approaching the marginal. Uh, this is probably the marginal area now. I'm, I'm just probably just about to pull this out. Yep, there I am. <laughs> okay, now I'm reloading the boat, so I'm going to you know send it out again. So I just reloaded the boat again, sending it out to the spot faster, kind of speeded up <laughs> footage, right? Okay, and it will slow down right when we're going to drop. Now this one I do something a little bit different. Okay, so I let the bait drop first, and then I follow it down. Okay, just to show you the difference between how you can use the float. Okay, so there goes the food. So I'm basically floating kind of right next to the boat here. The float's actually sitting flat like this because it acts like a normal float and then I pull it tight and it will go down. All right. So I'm sitting loose on the surface as I control the boat. <laughs> if only I had four, four arms, right? <laughs> okay. Any second now, I'll pull it down to the bottom. Interestingly, I only, I only let one hopper go. It's a two hopper boat. Right, so I let one hopper go, the hopper with the float in it, and there is the bait. Right, so that's right underneath the float there. As you can see, it's kind of a nice gravel spot, larger pieces of rock, really, not gravel, big pebbles. And it's interesting, the pellets have kind of slipped into the cracks between the pebbles, and my maze is kind of like, it's not really moved much, it's, it's kind of stayed where you put it, right? So that's kind of interesting. All right, nice clear venue, it's a gravel pit, really good visibility. Okay, so that's the first drop. Those small fish you can see are bluegill, right? So that's like a very common American uh, sunfish, right? And uh, they're, they're attracted to motion, really. They're sight predators. They're insectivores. So anything falling through the water, they'll probably try and grab it. Okay, not quite as uh, <laughs> not quite as lethal as roach and rudd in terms of stealing your bait, but uh, you know, catch them occasionally. Usually on a very small piece of uh, corn, right? So there we are. So we're looking at the bottom there. Pretty nice. It's interesting when you actually set your fish spy up, you, you press record on the app on your phone because obviously radio Wi-Fi doesn't go underwater. So you, once, when it's on the surface, you set record. I actually set record when it's actually back on the bank. So it's sitting there in the boat recording the whole time. But you can actually have it poking up out of the water. You can press record and then pull it down, pull it back up and then watch the footage when it's the surface, which is kind of nice. I don't really use that feature. I just prefer to record everything and look at it later like we are now. But again, if you want to do real-time video, you can. Okay, so if we look now, we're actually at the surface, and you can it's about seven feet there, so you can just about make out the yellow patch of bait there. You know, so uh, it's interesting. It's the, the, the marginal shelf goes from, like, literally a foot down to about seven and a half feet. And I try and bait just before the weed starts. So I want as much water over the fish's backs as possible because it is so clear, right? And it's interesting. Where I've baited that spot, you can just about see the bottom. Okay, so that's kind of interesting. Oh, there's the second hopper. <laughs> a little delayed there, but there it goes. Kind of a nice picture. Actually, use, as I mentioned, a combination of um, compressed pellets, actually, not the, the extruded pellets or the hard feed pellets you're used to maybe in the UK. They're actually kind of horse pellets, so they're just kind of compressed uh, vegetable based ingredients work quite well. You know, they're, they're not uh, strongly fish meal based or anything. They're just vegetable based. So they actually uh, make for a good, you know, they, they fall apart really quickly. So they make actually for a good, uh, eventually after about 10 minutes, they actually turn into ground bait, which is nice. Okay. But then you can treat them as pellets, you know, for in terms of putting them in a bag and things like that, or in a bait boat in this case. So yeah, big fan of the, the horse pellets here in the United States. You can also get them actually um, flavored with molasses, which is pretty good. But I, I generally prefer the plain ones because I flavor them myself, obviously with the impulse feeding stimulant and some pineapple and other things sometimes. All 
All right, that's pretty much it. Pros and cons. Well, <laughs> obviously the fish spy is cheaper. You know, it's less than two hundred dollars US, where and also smaller. Right, so it's cheaper and smaller, and it's not prone to twist because you're attached to the bottom. The camera on the boat, well, it's more expensive. Um, it's bigger, right? And you have to have that big kind of case you carry around with the with the kind of the the screen and everything. Whereas this this thing works off your phone, right? So it's all wins for this so far. Where this isn't so good is that it's only like good where you drop it. Obviously, the camera, wherever the boat is, you can look. So the boat's better if you want maybe to do a kind of a survey over an area. Although if you just want to pull this back toward you in video, the bottom like we saw, yeah, it works great, right? Okay. So all in all, and I've been using both for about a year now, I have defaulted to this one, <laughs> okay? Defaulted to this one. So I really enjoy using this. It gives me more information. And honestly, if you if you watch those cameras when they're spinning, you get vertigo sometimes and it's kind of not good. So yeah, I, I prefer this one. Okay. That's just me. You may have a uh, different experience. Feel free to kind of mention in the comments what you think, right? Do you uh, use a, a winch cam routinely? Do you like it? Why do you like it? Have you tried both? Or are you a fan of the float like me, right? And why do you like it? Okay. All right. Stop there. See you guys on the next one.